So the average American consumes roughly 100 pounds of chicken per year. Now in the United States, 95% of freshly slaughtered chicken, this is regular and organic, is run through a chlorine rinse to cool the temperature of the meat and to reduce bacterial contaminants like salmonella, Campylobacter, Staphylococcus, and Listeria. Now this is known as a pathogen reduction treatment. In the European Union, this treatment is not allowed, and the EU has refused to accept chlorinated chicken from countries like the United States since 1997. Now this ban was highly debated after Brexit, as Britain was not dependent on European uh, laws anymore. However, due to the backlash in the population, a proposed deal to accept uh, United States chicken in Britain was put on ice, so they didn't want our chlorinated chicken over there. The European Union believes that the chlorination treatment is a very bad substitute for proper hygiene in raising and slaughtering chickens, but they're also worried about chlorine residue in chicken meat, and this is often referred to as disinfection byproducts, or DVPs. But does chlorinated chicken pose health risks for the consumer? I mean, I'd like to know I'm eating chicken, right? And um, I would say about three, four times a week, you know, uh, one meal uh, during those times, you know, not huge amounts, but this is something I'm consuming. And until recently, I was not aware that chicken is chlorinated and that these chlorine uh, residues or disinfection byproducts can be in there. Now, one concern is that chlorination can cause pathogens like salmonella to enter a dormant state, which makes them difficult to detect on standard testing. And this, of course, then gives a false sense of security. So in other words, when we're testing the meat, it will show a very low count of bacteria. But this is misleading because these bacteria are in this dormant state, so they're more difficult uh, to detect. It doesn't mean they're not there, but they're still active. And it means if you touch the surface and then you, of course, contaminate utensils, plates, and other food with it, you can still get sick. So they can get out of the dormant state and still be infectious to the person. And of course, this is a very uh, significant risk there, right? And uh, while it is inarguable that a chlorine rinse can reduce, at least on paper, the prevalence of pathogens like salmonella from roughly 14% in controls to 2%, and this was done in the United States in testing, and chickens tested in the European Union typically have 15 to 20% salmonella, the rates of consumer infection with pathogens found on chicken is significantly higher in the United States than compared to Europe. Now, in 2016, there were 450 deaths from salmonella, from chicken, uh, raw chicken infected with salmonella in the United States. So not infections, actually deaths. So there were millions of infections with uh, contaminated uh, chicken meat but 450 people actually died. Whereas zero deaths from salmonella were reported in the United Kingdom the same year. Now in 2023, the rate of foodborne illnesses in the United States was one in six people. That's a pretty high number. In the United Kingdom, for comparison, it was one in 28 people, so significantly lower than that, right? So reducing the measurable amount of bacteria on raw chicken does not really seem to be the whole story here. And what about these disinfection byproducts? Now, in a publication titled Risk Assessment of Disinfection Byproducts in Poultry Chilled in Chlorinated Water, pretty much exactly what we're looking at here, the authors write that further analysis of daily diet exposure to disinfection byproducts revealed that water is the predominant source and contributes 99% of the daily, uh, daily exposure to disinfection byproducts poultry chilled with chlorinated water at 50 parts per million, which seems to be the standard concentration in these uh, chlorine water baths, accounts for only 0.3 to 1% of the exposure. Therefore, disinfection byproducts exposure from consuming poultry does not create a significant risk for cancer or other health conditions. So in other words, what they're saying is here, 99% of the chlorine or chlorine byproducts or disinfection byproducts in general come from our tap water, from the water we're consuming in our diet, not from chicken. And then a very, very small percentage comes from the chicken. So they say it's negligible. Because even if we use an activated carbon filter or we use even better a reverse osmosis filter, um, we cannot get completely get rid of chlorine. It's gonna be in there. There are some other disinfectants sometimes present as well. These things can react with organic matter. I mean, you know, there's all these things that we're not concerned about, but the amount of these uh, uh, pathogens are very, very, very low, very small. So <clears throat> I thought it would be interesting not to look at studies uh, that were done in the European Union or in the US, because obviously there's, 
this animosity and um, Europe doesn't want to chlorinate chicken from America. And this is not just for these claimed um, health issues, but also um, this has to be with the economy financially. And, um, you know, uh, the U.S., of course, wants to get rid of it. We, I mean, we're producing so much chicken, we want to export it because it's also a financial interest there. So when one side argues, hey, this is safe here and you can take it, the other one said, hey, I'm not going to take it. Uh, and there is a financial reason. I think this is not a very good scientific discussion. But New Zealand is sort of uh, pretty far from these two places. And they said, hey, listen, I mean, we have chlorinated chicken here. Why don't we see if this is harmful to our population? And the there was a research project for the... Uh, New Zealand Food Safety Authority, and that was titled Chlorinated Compounds Formed During Chlorine Wash of Chicken Meat. And the researchers here concluded that chlorine has been reported to exert its microbial disinfection activities by both chemical and physical mechanisms. And it is to be expected that there will be some reactions between components of the disinfection system and food components. However, the formation, sorry, the information collected by this review indicates that at least for carcinogens and mutagens, the concentrations of chlorine required to induce formation are well in excess of those used in practice. So in other words, what we're using in these chlorine washes is way too low to produce um, any concerning uh, particles that, that on consumption can cause some issue with our health. And this is again a fairly, in my opinion, independent review from a fairly independent country. Now, in the 2017 article, Chlorinated Chicken, Why You Shouldn't Give a Cluck, catchy title, of course, the authors note that adults would need to eat 5% of their body weight in chlorinated chicken each day to be at risk of ill health from poultry alone. And they further say that drinking water poses a far greater risk, making up 99% of the disinfection byproducts consumed in a typical diet. So same finding again. So most of the uh, disinfection byproducts come from our drinking water. And what we consume in our chicken is not really such a big deal. What they say here, and also keep this in mind just in perspective, 5% of body weight daily of chicken meat. For me, this would be nine pounds of chicken a day, and I would have a very hard time doing that. I am probably eating less than one pound of chicken per week. So just to put this in perspective. So <clears throat> what I learned from this research really was, well, first of all, our practice for commercial chicken, and I'm saying commercial chicken here uh, purposely because we have also free range and uh, other chicken that is farmed differently. But the way we treat, the way we farm, slaughter and prepare commercial chicken is absolutely disgusting. And it is absolutely horrible for the animal. I must say that. I mean, it didn't turn me into a vegan, but uh, I am now strongly considering when I'm buying uh, chicken at the grocery store, to go for the at least cage-free or ideally free-range chicken, depending, of course, on price. Um, but I think that's a step in the right direction just from that perspective. And it has nothing to do with the health aspect or what the chicken has been fed necessarily, but it's really the way it's treated is horrendous. And I saw a lot of this in, in photos, in studies, as well in, in, as in videos on how these uh, chickens are raised, and it's, it's really terrible. Now, this doesn't mean that in Europe, all chicken is raised humanely in big pastures, you know, like you imagine this on, on, on big grassy uh, pastures. That's not quite true either. They have a chicken industry, which is probably not significantly better uh, to some extent. Now, uh, as it comes to these chlorination byproducts, then the main topic of this video, am I concerned about them? I am not really. I mean, all the research really shows that we don't have to worry too much about it. Do I really want it? No. I think if I could avoid it, I don't want the chlorinated chicken. I'll take the chicken without chlorine. And this brings up an interesting point. As I dug further into this, you can go to your local supermarket, most likely. And I went to Ralph's today to confirm this. They do have it there. And you can buy air chilled chicken. Now, this will come at a slightly higher price, um, but this chicken has not been exposed to a chlorine bath. So instead, the freshly slaughtered chicken is cooled with purified cold air to a low temperature, uh, thereby decreasing risk of pathogen growth. So they're cooling it with air instead of any water bath at all. And the manufacturers uh, using this air chilled process, um, they claim that, well, air chilled chicken produces more tender meat with better flavor and texture than water chilled chicken but also it decreases the water absorption into the meat. So you have to imagine if a freshly slaughtered chicken is sitting in this water bath and it can sit there for up to an hour actually, it will be um, you know, accumulating some water and that will of course increase its weight. So we're paying for some of this chlorine water as you're buying a chicken, which of course is not great. So they're saying this sort of offsets the price. I did the calculation, that's not quite true. It'll decrease it. 
So instead of being 50% more expensive, it might be ending up being 25% more expensive. So it's still a price difference, but then it's up to us really, hey, is this worth it for me or not, right? Now, another thing I came across is in the preparation of chicken, because I think we really have to assume uh, that any chicken meat we're buying will be contaminated with pathogens, with bacteria. And we really have to make it our goal as we're preparing this to minimize the spread of these pathogens in our kitchen surfaces and utensils, right? And I think the easiest way to do this is to have your pan or oven ready or preset prior to even unpacking your chicken. And um, <clears throat> watching more videos on this and reading some literature on this on how chefs recommend to do this without contaminating their entire kitchen, they say that you should not rinse your chicken with water. But instead, you unpack it and put it straight onto the heated oil in your pan or on your oven tray. Now, I actually use disposable gloves to unpack the chicken, and I make sure that prior to even doing so, the garbage is open, and I don't have to touch any surfaces once I open the chicken package, right? So I open the package, I put the chicken onto the pan. I have some um, avocado oil in there already. It's at low heat. And then I dispose of the package and the gloves and uh, close the garbage. And this way I haven't touched any surfaces, right? I think this makes a big difference because this way you, there's no chance to, con to contaminate other utensils or your plates or your surfaces in your, in your kitchen actually, right? Um, <clears throat> and then as you turn the chicken, so after it's done on one side, when you turn it, you gotta remember that the top part of it where you touch it with the fork as well, will not be cooked yet. So that utensil you use to flip the chicken the first time should go in the sink and get washed with soap and water, of course, right? And this way you kind of keep it, your kitchen clean. So if this was informative, please subscribe and leave a comment or question. I'm highly interested to hear if anyone has had the misfortune of being infected with salmonella or another bacteria from raw chicken. And also what you do to keep, uh, you know, these contaminants to enter your kitchen. Furthermore, are you spending extra money to get the air chilled chicken and avoid the chlorinated chicken? Also, do you buy chicken meat that is free range or at least cage free?